Um, I had a, an image for you when I was shuffling out the cards, so let me just uh, relay what I saw. So I'm seeing this woman, and she's walking in a garden with, um, with a child, a, a little girl, like four or five years old. Um, it's a really beautiful garden. Um, there were all kinds of flowers. Uh, I'm seeing like daisies, tulips, and just, it's, it's really beautiful. The woman's about 30. And this seems to me like it's her child and she has a basket. The, the little girl has a basket and she's picking flowers as she goes. And she's, uh, what really stood out to me was, uh, she was picking the flower, like, you know, at the stem, um, so that she could, you know, arrange them when she gets home. And the little girl was picking the flower right at the, I don't even know the technical term, but, but she's not picking the stem. She's picking it right where the flower is. So then if you were to get home and you arrange it, you couldn't put it in a vase. You couldn't, you know, it wouldn't be able to absorb water. So I hope that makes sense. And, um, so the little girl keeps doing that in, in putting them in her basket. And, um, while the older woman is keeps picking the flowers and the little girl is like trying to get your the, the older woman's attention, which I presume to be you. And I feel like you're you're there physically. You're going through the motions, putting the flowers in the basket and picking the pretty flowers. But it seems like your thoughts are preoccupied elsewhere. It's almost like you're in a trance just walking through this really beautiful garden and um, you're not really aware of what she's doing, the little girl's doing, and um, it's like you're very much lost in your thoughts. So when I saw this, um, especially when it comes to, you know, uh, imagery with children, it usually um, tells us that there is uh, somebody in your life that you have to, you know, give your utmost attention to, okay? This is somebody that relies on you. This is somebody that needs to be told how to behave, what to do, how to do things the correct way. And this is also indicative of, you know, um, responsibilities as well that we have to take care of. So whatever it is that you guys are dealing with or going through, and I'm not going to downplay, you know, the, the, the emotional distance that I feel happening here. There's a sense of um, just going through the motion, not really feeling inspired or being very emotionally present in the activity that you're doing. You're just going through the motions. And other people around you are asking for, for, for guidance or asking for your attention or wanting to share an experience with you. But I feel like you're not emotionally available. So that's, that's the sense that I got. And um, I just feel like, you know, it is going to be quite a busy week for you. And uh, what I do sense, um, especially as it relates to children, household chores, um, somebody needing uh, possibly the kids, if you have, you know, children, um, I, I feel like they need help with something very technical. It could be homework. It could be, you know, how to write a report. And I feel like younger children, like under the age of 15, who are still, you know, very wobbly when it comes to their academics. And um, I feel like they, they either need a tutor, they need technical information as to how to do something, or they might be a little bit struggling in the school front. And they might need some type of assistance. And they're reaching out to somebody um, so, you know, if, if that's your case, just make sure that you're making your the time to make sure you check their homework to make sure that they're doing the work that they're supposed to. And um, for those of you who are in school right now, I almost feel like you're you feel like you're not getting the support from your mentors, from your teachers, from your professors. Um, we are moving away from the holiday season. So, you know, that might be the 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 reason why you're emailing them you're needing something you know um you're needing some guidance and if you feel like they've been MIA they're coming back into the picture okay so i feel like it might have just been a temporary lapse mainly because of the holiday season they've got things they needed to take care of they might have stressors in their lives and they might have you know a lot of 
um, things they needed to take care of from their end. And as a result, coming into this week, if you feel like you've been kind of ghosted or you feel like you've been reaching out and the other person is not responsive or they're not answering uh, your questions or they just seem a little bit unavailable, I feel like that it has it, it's nothing personal. It, it It's them dealing with, you know, things that they have, like like responsibilities that they have to take care of. And so what I feel is, um, yes, there is a lot of work coming through for this week. There are a lot of things that you need to, to do. And I also see many of you in some type of a mentorship position as well. You could be a supervisor. You could be a mentor. You could be uh, a tutor. You could be a teacher. You could even be like, you know, managing people underneath you. Okay. And um, the first thing that really stood out here, I have the Three of Swords, and it's linked up with the Three of Pentacles. So this is workplace related. And I feel like there might have been some people that you were very, um, that you worked really well with, that you jive really well with, that you, um, that you, it's, it's like the camaraderie between you and that person. I feel like it might be one person. It's almost like the two of you work together so well. There's this uh, unspoken, you know, understanding between the two of you. You like the same things. You have the same work ethics. When you tell them to do something, you don't have to worry. And likewise, when they come and tell you to do something, they don't have to worry. So there's this really good, great sense of camaraderie and great sense of rapport between you and another person in the work situation. And I feel like somebody left and went to fly off on their own. So they might have left the work environment because there were other opportunities. Queen of Pentacles. This is somebody that sees a good opportunity. Okay. They're very trustworthy, very reliable, and just um, incredibly, I, I feel like, they have a really big sense of responsibility. They have great work ethics and they're very trustworthy. And I feel like the, the whole concept of trust, trust and being able to, you know, you guys are naturally very friendly. People come to you. But I also feel like with Libras, there is um, a little bit of an icy, uh, I want to say interior rather than the exterior because you guys are really friendly, very outgoing, very charming, you know, and but then there is that that interior, that icy core that's disallowing uh, people to enter. And you're like that for a reason, because you want to have that totality of um, a connection before you let somebody in, like the emotional connection, the trust. Trust somehow came out very strongly in the spread. Being able to trust somebody, not just on a superficial level, but like really admiring someone, trusting someone, trusting that you can tell them your, your deepest, darkest secrets, and they will never tell another person. They will never use the information against you, that they have your best interests at heart. So I feel like you had somebody like that in the work environment that you trust fully and completely. And um, I feel like this person has flown away because of other opportunities, other obligations or other. Um, and I feel like it's a far away, you know, like someone has, has left the nest and have flown off and soared and there's vast distances. So it's not like, you know, you can, um, it's not like you can see them on the weekend. It's not like you can um, see them like next month. I feel like you have to make arrangements in order to to see them, in order to speak to them again. And so there is a sense here of um, responsibilities in the work front piling up because somebody left and there is a vacancy and uh, other people have to do maybe twice the work because this person was so efficient that they it's like getting two employees instead of one and now the work that is distributed it, it needs to be you know uh, taken care of by other people and so there's a lot of busy energies that i'm seeing coming in and it's also the end of the holiday season where work piles up for those of you who have been on vacation or in the office or in the work environment or in the school academic environment um it's like you're kind of hitting the ground running okay and finances in this spread looks really, really, really stable. 
So I feel many of you are spending a lot more time with like housing, um, decor, decoration, buying things that uh, like splurging on things that are necessary. You know, so if you've been eyeing like a uh, new, that new, you know, dining room table and you're just like, oh, I'll get it, I'll get it, I'll get it. I feel like you're going to furnish your house. You might even be anticipating a lot of people coming into your house or allowing for more people to come into your home you might have been a little bit isolated or you might have you know just gone out with friends but never allow people to come into your home so now you're making your home more homey you're making your home more cozy more welcoming because you're expecting you know your social life to to pick up which i feel like it will and um, i'm also seeing some opportunistic people in the work environment, okay? Um, the ones that when the higher ups are around, they're on the best behavior. They they act like they're doing so much work. And then when the higher ups are, you know, dashing out the door, they go back to their um they go back to chit chatting, you know, browsing the internet, not doing the work that they're supposed to. And I also feel an element of um doing like cutting corners doing work the wrong way and so that's for people in in your working environment as well as um if you have children okay and if you're a student by all means please don't cut corners because um education is funny because um well everything in life i feel um takes on this energy Whatever you put in is what you're you're going to get out. So if you are shortchanging yourself by, you know, dashing off assignments at the last minute, uh, not studying or cramming um, just to pass an exam, you're not going to be able to long term, in the long run, retain the material. And knowledge is cumulative. It builds on itself. And so... And, you know, just consider how much we are paying for tuition or um, for school or for training or for seminars or whatever the situation might be for even a tutor or even paying a tutor for our child. It's still our responsibility, you know, to follow up to make sure the child is doing the work. It's our responsibility to understand that whatever we put in is what we're going to get out. So if we're doing like a sloppy job, <clears throat> And I don't sense that with a lot of Libras. You guys do things with a lot of care, but you might have other placement in your natal chart that, you know, can create like that cutting corners type of energy. Um, and so I feel like, you know, you want to be cognizant of that and you want to make sure that things are done properly because knowledge builds on itself. Okay. So aside from that, I do see a little bit of a quarrel and conflict um, very minor. It's it's almost like ideological differences. You know, it's not about infidelity or cheating or um, anything like that. I just feel like conflict um, between you and another person. For some of you, this could be like a sister. I'm seeing a sister. For others of you, this could be like a love interest, okay? And I'm seeing earth, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, and water sign, um, Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio, okay? So if you have sisters with those uh, types of sun sign, moon, rising, um, it's like, I, I, you know, you guys are very opinionated, um, but I feel like, you know, the way in which you project or in which you convey your ideas is very diplomatic, Okay, it's not forceful. It's very, it's very like tried and true. It's very rehearsed. It's very research. So you arrive at what you believe in through thorough research, and and you're just gonna state what you believe in, and you don't really care if people uh, agree. You're not one to argue your point or push your agenda on other people, and that's where the Libran diplomacy is just you know very highly sought after, and I do feel like this is a person that has belief system that might not be founded on facts and trial and error. They they might just have like an emotional response to something. So they can tell you, oh, they feel a certain way, but they don't really have valid reasons, you know, valid reasons. Uh, um, they, they can't really give you anything concrete, anything 
I want to say like scientific to corroborate the things that they believe in. So it's an emotional response, whereas from your end, you're stating facts, you're stating figures, you're using logic to back up the argument. And with them, it's just, it's not very logical. So from your perspective, this person might be a little bit emotionally sensitive or emotionally irrational when they're dealing with you. And if this is a family member, in particular a sister, um, they're they're really telling you to be uh, patient with this person. I see like some deep rooted, you know, like patterns of behavior and um, um, I, I see somebody who's been very isolated. And, you know, isolation basically means somebody has been spending a lot of time by themselves or cooped up in their own worldview, surrounding themselves by people that believe the same things that they believe in, that has the same hobbies, the same interests, the same, um, even work in the same place. And so it's really hard for them to break out of their worldview and see a different worldview, right? Um, and I do see somebody who's so academically inclined, it could be you or them, that you're seeing things or they're seeing things from more of like a scientific approach and they're disregarding the, the reality of how things are actually playing out as you apply them to real life. So there's a, um, a huge clash, clash, common sense and emotional responses is what I'm sensing. Common sense dictates this. And then the other person might be going against all common sense and just be like, well, I don't care about this. I feel this way and I feel like we should do it that way. And so there are some power dynamics, a little bit of power struggle and um, not being able to see eye to eye between you and another person. OK, so keep in mind, I feel like the energy is short. It's not something that's going to taint the entire picture for the week, but I feel like it is something that is very cyclical coming back around as well as, um, as well as, um, something that's recurring. Okay. If, if, whenever we have situation in our lives that recur, it's really important for us to recognize that it is a lesson for us to learn and, I've experienced many instances of this where if I try to avoid something, it comes back in a different form and it grows a little bit bigger in magnitude. And so try to be aware of it and try to resolve the problem as they come in. Do not shy away from conflict, Libras. Okay, do not shy away from conflicts. Um, I feel like I feel like a lot of the times when we are in a conflictual situation with another person, our egos get the best of us. You know, if, especially as an air sign, we identify very strongly with our belief system and somebody that doesn't believe the same things that we do. We, we often see it as, you know, it's not meant to be like this, but we often see it as an attack on our character. Okay. So for example, um, for example, um, let's say, I don't know how to, okay, so for example, you, you have a sister and you don't really get along with her and uh, you're like, um, I want to be a vet, and, uh, a vet. I want to be a dentist or I want to be a vet, whatever the situation is. And then she's just like, um, you should be a proper doctor. You know, I, I feel like it's somebody who's a little bit judgmental. Um, you should be a proper doctor. You know, vets are people that haven't made it through successfully through med school or, you know, their residency or whatever the case is. And you're just like, but I love animals and, um, veterinary care is, you know, growing right now. So it's a good field to get into. And so you're speaking from, from, from your perspective. And I feel it's almost like the way the tone or the, the, the way that the other person um, tries to steer you in a different direction. It's, it's almost like they're 
attacking your your interests, your personal beliefs, and your likes and your own dislikes. So it's really hard for us to separate the ego from our thoughts. And keep in mind, all conflict, a lot of conflict actually, can be mitigated if we try to detach the ego from it and look at things from a little bit more of an objective standpoint so that it doesn't rattle us, so that we can be a little bit more calmer, more collected when we are trying to refute the other person's argument. It's almost like, you know, when we feel personally attacked and um, I'm getting the conflict here. Okay. It's the dragon fighting a lion, different species, different worldviews, different ways of doing different instincts. But it's a situation where I feel like the dragon's going to win. So the point of this is it's a stalemate, supposedly, because it's the two of swords. But there is clearly somebody with an advantage here. And so when we argue and we get into a heated debate, um, and you guys are, you, even when you're upset, you can think very, very lucidly, like very clearly. But I feel it's almost like it's a lot more meaningful to, to, to be a lot calmer and to reason with the other person. And, you know, even tell them, well, that's your own personal opinion. You know, everyone is entitled to have their own opinion. And I like animals, so I want to be a vet. I like working and caring for animals, you know. And then you can say, like, or... <laughs> Why don't you be the doctor? If it seems like it's so blasé for you to say, you know, be a proper doctor. Why don't you go through med school? Why don't you, you know, do the work? And rather than telling people. So I feel like um, approaching it from that standpoint would be really, um, it, it would mitigate the, the conflict. It would just kind of like squash everything. Okay. So I feel like someone's not fighting fair and I feel like someone is using like emotional appeals to, to as their reasoning, as their primary reason to like, as their primary argument. And uh, either way, I, I feel like, you know, it's, um, it's telling you to kind of like rise above it, rise past it, or <coughs> excuse me, at least looking at things from a bird's eye view and try to resolve the conflict Okay, don't shy away from it. Resolve the conflict so that it doesn't come back. Okay. Um, let me see if there's anything coming into the picture. Um, I feel like for those in coupled relationships, there might be co-parenting issues. Um, conflict between you and a partner regarding children. And then I also feel like if you're in relationships with blended families, there, there's that element as well. And then I also feel, um, I, I do sense a little bit of a blast from the past here. And um, the blast from the past pertains to a situation that, um, the where there has been a lot of conflict between you and another person, and they could be whatever sign, um, you've moved away from it. And I feel like you're assessing whether or not to re-engage with this person because of the past history of conflict, okay? So there, there's an element here about somebody coming in, soliciting you. Somebody who's like, oh, I've changed, you know, here's what I'm doing with my life. Here are the ways in which I've changed. Here is me trying to make amends, trying to make things better, okay? So there's that element. And um, I would say, you know, it's water under the bridge. So I feel like this time around, just be very patient. If you are re-engaging romantically, uh, friendship-wise, whatever the circumstance with that person, uh, be very, be very, very patient with this process. It's almost like there is a lot of wishful thinking that this can turn, work out uh, the second time around. And it can. And it can because there's a lot of history here. We have as well the Six of Cups. But the Six of Cups is also, you know, looking at a situation through a very, like a very childlike, idealistic lens. But I feel like it can work, okay? Just we have to do things a little bit differently. We have to be more patient, more understanding. And we have to also know the pattern of behaviors of this person. They might be a little bit emotionally irrational. But I feel like they're very caring. They're deep down. They have a good heart. 
they're just um their logic i feel is very emotion emotions based and so recognize the pattern and recognize ways that you can fix it okay